Patrick, thank you for that very kind introduction. Like others, let me begin by extending my condolences for last night's loss of life at Camp Liberty. But what may be a surprise to many of you here and to some of my colleagues is because of an earlier speech I gave to, to this group, I had a personal connection to one of the martyrs of Ashraf in the April attack that the Attorney General just mentioned. And so when I heard the news this morning, it hit very close to home for me. And I was thinking about the pledge of the national resistance, with, which opens with the words, and I quote, when I chose to walk in the path of freedom, I decided to sacrifice my life for freedom. As I prepared to be with you today, I thought back on that first meeting here in D.C. And from the beginning, I was moved by the plight of the residents of Ashraf, especially the women of Ashraf, to whom I spoke directly that day in December of 2010. And the women of Ashraf themselves were so kind and so grateful that I had addressed them directly, that they produced a DVD with personal messages that was delivered to me thanking me for my mere words. Then, as now, I was humbled and grateful. And when I had the opportunity to meet with Mrs. Rajavi in Paris, I asked to meet with many of you who brought to me pictures and stories of the horror and the tragedy that has been visited upon you and your families by the Iranian regime. I was then and remain now both humbled and moved by those I have met and those in the Ashraf DVD, by your courage, by your commitment, and by your grace. So imagine my horror when I later learned in the spring of 2011 that one of the women on the Ashraf DVD who so kindly helped make that DVD to thank me was one of the martyrs of the 2011 attack that was visited upon Ashraf and its residents. A life stolen too soon, just as the ones last night, from their families, from their children, and the cause of freedom denied their spirit, and the world de denied this woman's sparkling eyes and beautiful smile. On Thursday, I had asked, because of this personal connection, I had asked the organizers for an update on the conditions in Camp Lim Liberty, a camp that had been sold as a temporary transit location, where the es residents of Ashraf found themselves after transfer with an understanding that they would be, be both protected and repatriated. Liberty is, this, what this camp is and what it was meant to provide now after last night's events betrays the cruel deceit that was visited upon us. You know the report I received before last night about insanitary and inhumane living conditions. But what happened this morning is now the most serious, troubling, and dare I say, criminal act that we have seen thus far. Six dead and over a hundred wounded. And where did the wounded have to turn for medical attention? to a facility whose power generator had been fallen victim to one of the rockets, so it was without power. You know, when I, when I heard the tragic news about the attack last night on Camp Liberty, I was reminded of a great, the speech of a great Irish nationalist, Padraig Pierce, at the grave of another great Irish patriot, O'Donovan Rosa. And his words rang true so I share them with you today. Life springs from death, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations.
And as I did in December of 2010, permit me to take a moment to look into the camera and to address those in Camp Liberty. Know we are here. Know there are family, friends, and supporters here and around the world. They fight on your behalf and continue to raise their voices. To those at Camp Liberty, do not be discouraged and do not lose hope. Your American friends here today, by their courage, won the battle for the delisting of the MEK, but they continue their fight, and today we rededicate ourselves for justice, for your dignity, for your safety, and for your repatriation. If last night's attack on liberty was meant to silence and to intimidate us, our message to Iran and to the Iraqi government is, you lose. We are here. and we will remain here and we will not be silenced until there is a democratic and free Iran. I believe there are hopeful signs that the Iranian regime is fractured and weakened. There are internal divisions between the politicians and the ayatollahs. Iran's puppet regime Assad is a desperately weak tyrant whose only hold on power is the ongoing genocide of his own people. And thus, a weakened Iranian regime uses its terrorist proxies to project its power and to foment instability throughout the region, interfering in other countries in the region, in Yemen, in Syria, in Bahrain, in Bulgaria, and in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia, to name just a few. Now is the moment, the time of the opposition. Iran's freedom movement has fought so hard to create this movement. Let this be your Persian spring that is peaceful, that eschews power, and that does not require nuclear weapons to hold on to power. You the Iranian people, you, the current opposition, understand what the Ayatollah fears. Power is derived from the people, not from their weapons and not from violence. As I close, I, I realized as I was sitting here looking out, you could occasionally hear the cries of children, babies, young children running around in the back. And I am reminded, it is for those children that we are here. Those are children who have never seen a free Iran. I can only imagine how difficult it is for their parents and grandparents who are here, who know the enormous majesty, power, and beauty of the Persian culture, and who have missed it. Remind ourselves when the children cry and the children run around. We are inspired by them. We will fight so that they will be able to visit and know and be reunited with family in a democratic and free Iran. Thank you.